Hello everyone, so I've got something quite exciting to show you today. I don't normally do these sorts of kind of unboxing videos I guess, but in this case it's something that I'm quite keen to show you. So uh, I have actually had a quick quick look, but um, I haven't really had time to look at it prior to this. So let's have a look, what have we got in the box? So you might be able to see now. This is a Turing Pi version 1 board. So I bought this quite some months ago now and I've been really quite excited about it arriving in the post. And what it is, is essentially a cluster computer on a single board. So if I just open it up. So it's um, roughly mini ITX sized circuit board and you can put seven uh, Raspberry Pi compute modules on here and it's the compute modules up version three, so not the version fours. And um, then it has a built-in network switch that allows you to communicate across these devices and um, use them essentially as a sort of mini computing cluster. And I actually have the modules to go in it, so I'll put them in now. So I bought the modules some time ago, uh, so I hope they work, um, otherwise claiming and some kind of warranty might actually be quite difficult. But I've got no reason to believe they won't do. And what I got was, you can probably see, is the Compute Modules 3 Plus with the onboard 32 gigabytes of memory. And these are quad-core uh, 2.1 gigahertz processors with one gigabyte of memory. And then it's an eMMC storage. So that means that each, each of the seven modules will have 32 gigabytes of storage built in, which I can use for uh, either the application space or the operating system. So I'll get these plugged in. These are sort of use the standard SODIM style uh, connector. So they just fit in here. And then Squeeze it down, it should clip in. There we go. So they do that with all seven. So I haven't exactly decided what I'm gonna do with this yet, although I do have a vague plan of setting it up as a sort of um, computing cluster to analyze documents. So I'm quite interested in that, I have a website it's dedicated to building technologies to automatically analyze text. And I can see this being part of that project, it's mostly for fun. And I will probably put some kind of distributed file system on here and then perhaps run some machine learning algorithms over the documents. I haven't exactly decided how to do it yet, but that's my sort of vague plan. I don't know if these all need heat sinks added into them or if the case I have will have sufficient airflow to keep them cool. We'll see. So my original thinking was I'd net boot these, so I'd have one with a sort of master image on it and I'd net boot the rest off. But I think that actually might be, I'm not actually totally sure that these modules actually do netboot. I know that's something that the more recent Raspberry Pis do, but I'm not sure if it's something that the, these compute modules do. Um, so what I was thinking actually is that I might have a boot image on an SSD on SSD, on an SD card rather, 
boot off that and then just use the built-in storage for applications rather than boot. The advantage of that I think will be that I can uh, re-image uh, any machine if I sort of mess up the config or whatever um, just switch out the SD card, reboot and away you go. So that seems like a pretty sensible way of managing this. They are actually releasing a new version which takes the compute module version 4. Um, it says less of them. I think it's maybe 4 rather than 7. And um, but, and slightly more features on the backplane. But I think I'll get one of those as well because the version 4 modules have much more memory capacity and also faster CPUs. And I think it'd be interesting to have the mix. Let's check all these are seated. So on the back you can see the uh, SD cards for each device, so seven, and then this top one, I believe it's this one, is like the master compute module uh, or master node if you like, and uh, that's the one that things like the HDMI output feeds into and then some of these other USB and Ethernet. Uh, well actually the Ethernet I would assume goes to this built-in switch so you can just click that and connect to all of them. Um, obviously you need a battery. Power wise it uh, has a 12 volt ATX header so what I'm probably going to do is power it off uh, small CPU as long as it draws enough power to keep the CPU going properly um, or if not I'll get a DC power thing that plugs in there and yeah so that's really cool it's a really neat device and uh, it should be the basis of some really interesting projects I just need to get it going so yeah that's uh, the next phase of this project is to get it in the case get a battery, get a couple of micro SD cards and fire it up. Well, a couple, seven. Um, but yeah, really neat little device, really good fun. So if you're into kind of messing about with home lab style cluster computing, this is the perfect thing for you. Although I think the availability has not been amazing on these because of the chip shortages, which is plaguing everything to do with computing at the minute. Um, yeah, so anyway, I'll, uh, I'll update you again when I get a bit further on with this project and hopefully you can see it running. Okay, thanks very much and I'll uh, see you in the next podcast.